I want to walk through the workflow for this final week, week six, uh, with the model ensembles. I and mean, just in case there are some questions about uh, how to load up the workflow, what things I'm looking for with the homework assignment. So I'm starting with the, this is the workflow the way it was, it was saved. I'm going to start by actually importing the workflow. So I'm going to import the nine workflow, set the root directory now on my Mac. Uh, even though the file is a .zip, uh, which is an archive file, so if you save it as a .zip file, you'd use the select archive file. Uh, mine unzips by default, so that's okay too. So I'm going to look at the unzipped version, and mine happens to save in this workflows folder. It's going to say Cup 98 Learn Week 7 Workflow Baseline, and that's uh, the, this is the same uh, week shift that uh, we've been seeing throughout the course with the original version of the course versus uh, the new one. Uh, I need to update the file names, but the content is the same. So I'm going to click on this, open it, and you can see that it identifies this workflow, and I'm going to set the destination. If it doesn't set it by default, uh, then you need to set where you want to st store it. Mine's in my local uh, directory and you can see all the workflows for this course I've uh, I've been creating over the last few years and uh, once you do that you can see I already have a version of this that I want to overwrite but you get that helpful uh, alert and it says some of the workflows already exist so I'm going to in the next I'm going to change the name of it and I'm going to change it to week six uh, and then I'm just going to say demonstration just to give it a unique name. And now it should show up right here with the demonstration. And I'll give an error during the uh, when you open it up. So this is what the workflow looks like. Notice that it's got a bunch of different models, including the Weka ensembles. You can use these as I have them, or you can copy and paste your own meta nodes uh, from prior weeks with uh, the models and the way you set up the models. Either way is fine. Uh, so uh, I'm going to go back to that workflow I was just at and grab my uh, CSV reader and paste it into here. So I'm just doing uh, Flower C, Flower V, or Control C, Control V if you're a PC user, just to connect up the correct data. I'm going to delete this. In my uh, machine, this shows up uh, through this path, and we want that cup 98 learn variable subset small dot text file, and I'm going to execute that right away, and that will start to uh, make some of these red uh, icons turn yellow as it takes a moment to do this. Okay, the rest of this is straightforward, and it works just the way things worked before. I'm just going to click on the execute button. And it'll just start executing things. It'll give a bunch of warnings, and you can ignore those. Uh, if at some point you really want to dive into what they all mean, uh, maybe we can have a side conversation. But anytime there's anything at all, like you can see group buys with no grouping column, which I use to count how many records I have available, and that's for the random uh, stratification. Uh, if there's no grouping variable, it complains. So now you'll see there's a lot of rock curve errors. That's what I want to address here. If there are some issues with some of these models. So I'm going to pause while this runs because it takes, I don't know, a minute or two to run all the way through. And then after it finishes running, uh, we'll resume. Okay, for you, it's instantaneous nearly, but for me, it was a couple minutes later that this finished. It's probably three minutes or so uh, that it took to run through all these because of the neural networks primarily. And you'll see most everything's green. There are a few <coughs> non-green uh, meta nodes. So I'm just going to open up first Naive Bayes to show you when I say it's all green. I mean, on the training path and on the testing path, they both are uh, showing up green. There are a bunch of nodes in here which uh, you don't really care about. Uh, mostly we're just caring about what's coming out, which are scored outputs from the Naive Bayes model. I also have a bunch of other nodes in here which uh, you can poke around with if you'd like. Uh, the biggest place where this uh, workflow is going to fail for you is with the rock curves. You notice rock curves and lift charts are not uh, being generated properly. And if I open up this rock curve, we'll see why. Uh, it's because some of the um, 
uh, columns that we're using to assess the um, what we call the the raw curve, the the actual curves themselves that rank orders the population, they did not populate properly. So I'm going to pull over probability of the target B equals one, which is logistic regression. We see the tree probabilities, the k nearest neighbor probabilities, naive base probabilities already over. Uh, there's a neural network probability. And uh, just as I said before, the neuron number isn't important. It's what the label is. So the neuron associated with target B equals one. And there's a second neural network we conclude as well. If you click OK, that should turn yellow. Same thing with the math formula. It's red. And it's because if you click apply, uh, you'll see an error that says invalid settings, no such column, P target B equals one. I think. Uh, NIME changed its output format uh, from uh, maybe from uh, version 8 or, or so when I first started using this to, to this current version. Uh, and actually the version I'm using uh, for this demonstration here is version 10.1 which just came out recently. Uh, so, But if you're still using version 9 I think you'll get the same error. And if you get the, that error it's because of this. So if we find the target B equals one, which is here. And if you grab everything below and after the dollar signs, you can double click on this one right here. Probability target B equals one. Double click on, I'll populate it, and that will be better. And I'll tell you then what the next error is, which is the neural network also has a changed label. This, all this is doing, uh, if you want to know the guts behind what it's doing, is computing the average of the probabilities. So for the ensemble, the simple ensemble here, instead of using the uh, any one of the probabilities as the representative probability that we'll assess, I take the average of the probability. So I just double clicked on one neuron zero, click apply, and now everything's fine. So if you see problems like that, just make sure your uh, list is the same. Or if you get fed up with trying to grab the exact beginning and end of each of these strings, you can just create your own average uh, which is one of the functions up here and if I could find it uh, there it is average and then just click you know naive bays k nearest neighbor the logistic regression the tree and one or more neural networks depending on what kind of ensemble you want to create and then I click OK and now you can see that's yellow and now I can execute it now, the last thing is the raw curves. Uh, this raw curve is going to have the same issue we were seeing before, so I'm going to add a few other uh, values to it, and you'll be able to see these raw curves are going to uh, now work properly. It takes a, a moment because it's got to sort the list six different ways to get these uh, all these different curves, and when I view the raw curve, uh, this will be part of your homework too assess all this but after it draws which takes a moment you'll see all the different models uh, including the ensemble which in, on my screen is in light blue uh, which tends to be at the top and you see the area into the curve uh, in the parentheses so those are the kinds of things you'll be looking at one last thing the Weka ensembles uh, I was surprised to see these fail with the, the current version of NIME and when I looked and see what was going on, let's open up one of these raw curves. And when I look here to find the sorting variable, it doesn't exist. So, where do we go? Let's go to these Weka predictors. That's the most likely ca uh, cause of this. And what I found was uh, we need to click on change prediction column name. So that it generates a field called prediction target B. Once I do that and click OK, if I run this, let me just show you what comes out of this now. Now when I look at the classified test data and look at the column names, now we finally see the probability target B equals 1 in there. Don't know why it works exactly like that, but that's what was happening. And then when I go to the raw curve, now I can click on the target B equals 1, and now it will generate a raw curve. This is for the bagging model, and I can execute this open the view which runs a little bit faster than that other one we saw which was a six-way ensemble and uh, so that's the raw curve for the bagging so you have to do that for each of these 
change the name. Yes, okay. Uh, if you get sick of the error message, you can click do not ask again, but frankly, I like it warning me when I'm resetting nodes, just in case I do something by mistake. That's important. And now we just have to change all these raw curves so that it has the probabilities entering in. And this is only so we can compute the area into the curve and compare the different ensembles by area into the curve. Now if I execute the concatenate, now I'll run through all these, generate all the raw curves, and then you'll be able to see, I'll just give you a quick peek, you'll be able to see the area into the curve for these different uh, Weka ensembles. Okay, that once you do that, you should be in good shape. And then you'll be able to compare these different uh, models. In fact, you could even uh, bring up the Weka results, um, fold them into your uh, overall results to compare. But uh, I'll leave that to you for the homework assignment to see which are better, the individual models, the heterogeneous ensemble, or these uh, Weka uh, bagging boosting uh, kinds of ensembles. So hopefully that will get you spun up and uh, Stop you from spinning your wheels, to take that analogy a little further, and uh, you'll be able to get rolling pretty quickly. And the, the, really the intent is to think about what are the ensembles doing and uh, how do we create ensembles so that when you're working on your own applications, you have a little more intuition about how these ensembles are working.